today I would like to share uh, a discipleship system uh, called the uh, 4x4 plus 1 uh, intentional and holistic discipleship system. Before I didn't have a, a whole picture uh, of the discipleship system. What Jesus did is um, as uh, Matthew 4.24 says uh, his uh, discipleship was very holistic. Uh, he used the uh, uh, healing and also teaching and also the preaching ministries. But from the name, the four by four plus one, so this is need to all work together uh, because uh, when you think about the truck, uh, there is uh, the four wheels, but the four wheels need to connect it to the four axes. Uh, and then all of this need to connect to the main frame. That's why the uh, four uh, axes, that's the four principles and the four wheels, that is uh, uh, four ministries. And then plus one means the main frame. So first I want to talk about the four uh, principles of uh, uh, discipleship. The principle number one that I can call is a great commission uh, prioritize the discipleship. Uh, because we have uh, many different ministries going on uh, in our uh, Salvation Army co-environment, but uh, every ministry is what we're doing need to be uh, focused on uh, the Great Commission. So um, if not, actually uh, it can be very uh, fragmented and then uh, it doesn't really work for the making disciples. So the number one principle is a great uh, commission uh, focused. So uh, we always remember, we need to remember uh, what is the ultimate goal and then what uh, is the direction uh, we need to work for. And the second principle is the one uh, uh, discipleship, usually we used to thought maybe if we have uh, some program of Bible study, then we, we thought, I thought uh, we, I could uh, uh, help the people to be a disciple. But uh, true discipleship uh, is uh, what Jesus did is uh, not just the teaching, but he uh, became a model. Uh, just like uh, we children learn from uh, their parents, uh, not exactly from what they're saying, but uh, uh, usually our children learn from parents how they do, what they do. Uh, so uh, that's the second principle. So our disciples need to include uh, our uh, life, uh, so modeling uh, the discipleship. Uh, so that uh, can be the second principle. And third principle, we used to thought the discipleship is only for ministers or co-officers or the committed as just a few people. But actually, uh, Jesus gave this uh, great commission not only uh, to those uh, committed disciples, but whoever uh, follow, wants to follow Jesus, uh, they are all disciples. This great commission is given to everybody. Uh, but uh, sadly, uh, our Christian church history uh, separated uh, the clergy uh, and the lay people. So more likely the lay people became very inactive, uh, following and obeying the ministers, but they don't really be a part of uh, this discipleship ministry. But that's not the uh, biblical sense of um, uh, ministry. So. What Jesus uh, uh, said is that everybody needs to be a part of the church and the church's uh, mission is to make a disciple. So the third principle is the all participating. The disciples need to be uh, uh, participated by the every each members. And then uh, fourth principle uh, we need to think about is uh, uh, all this uh, discipleship uh, ministry, discipleship need to be intentional what then is uh, we need to be we need to have a system and also all these uh, disciples need to work together so the holistic and intentional so uh, these are four principles the number one is a great commission focus number two is a uh, uh, transformational and modeling uh, discipleship and the third one is all participating and fourth one is intentional and holistic discipleship with these uh, four principles the four ministries we need to think about is a practical ministry is uh, like a four wheels uh, 
Number one, uh, the ministry is, uh, we can think from what Jesus did. Uh, when Jesus started his ministry, the first thing he did is he went out to the, uh, the town and then met uh, those uh, people there and then uh, recruit a uh, few disciples first. So he first they called like uh, Peter and James and uh, John. So those uh, three uh, uh, disciples became uh, uh, inner circle of Jesus' discipleship. After then, the number went to the uh, 12 people. Uh, after then, we can see there was about 70 people of disciples. After then, after Jesus' resurrection, about 120 people uh, were praying together uh, for the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit. And so we can see this kind of uh, uh, different sides of his ministry. So the discipleship uh, need to start from, uh, like Jesus did, we need to go out and meet the people, and then while Jesus uh, meeting uh, meet with the many people, uh, he as he uh, chose just a few people who really uh, uh, have a desire to be followers. So the first ministry uh, uh, we need to think about is. Uh, a smaller group, I can call smaller group. So actually it's nothing new, but uh, there was a, a group, a smaller group name, uh, LTG. It's uh, developed by Pastor Neil Cole. Uh, so this is uh, only the group for a group about uh, like a start, it can start with uh, two people, and then uh, they if they can have a third one, uh, it's great. Uh, after then, when they get a fourth member, uh, those four people break into two different groups. And so it can be multiplied. And then those are two groups of two people uh, also can invite another member. And then when they get a fourth member, can then also they can also divide it into another two uh, groups. So this can be a really effective for the multiplication. And also there's a smaller group more focused on uh, confessing uh, sins each other. So James 5.16 says we need to confess our sins each other. Uh, out of the John Wesley's uh, those uh, small group movement, the first one was the a group called the band. Uh, that is, had the same idea. So the LTG meeting is very um, the first stage of discipleship and then if you can see just one person, we can start with one person meeting uh, once a week about one hour and then this in, in LTG meeting uh, we have about three, uh, three uh, activities. Number one, uh, first we have about uh, 10 questions uh, checking each other's uh, uh, weekly life. So uh, the uh, questionnaire uh, include like uh, uh, any sins uh, committed. So uh, this is the first thing we do with this LTG meeting. We confessing sins each other. As you confess sins each other, actually God gave us a right to forgive the sins of uh, uh, others. So as you forgive others sin, uh, automatically God forgives and then with that of confession and forgiveness. Right now I have uh, two different separate LTG uh, meetings but I really uh, uh, receive a lot of help from this. So since we check each other, uh, those um, areas of we uh, being tempting, uh, tempted and also any coming scenes. So uh, I think this, uh, uh, as I get have this uh, LTG meeting, I, I think I become really more careful. So this is the, uh, and then first activity and second activity, every week we have uh, uh, like homework to read the uh, Bibles. So we can decide the Bible every week, the different Bible, and then uh, we uh, talk about it at the, at the meeting time. And the third one is we pray for uh, those who wants to uh, invite to the meeting. So basically this is the number one ministry and then number two ministry is a group of 12. This is a, like a small group uh, usually called as a cell or house church. And so this is what Jesus also had a group of 12 people uh, and then they the one who stayed together with Jesus and then went out to the mission uh, field together. So but the, uh, the focus of the first ministry, the smaller group, uh, is on the 
uh, transformation of each one's life, but to uh, focus on the second group, a second ministry, which is a small group of 12, uh, is uh, more like uh, serving each other and caring each other and experiencing the loving each other. So the leader's role is very important uh, in the ministry too. Uh, so the, this uh, small group of 12, uh, and they can more than 12 also, they can also multiply and break into the two different groups. But the more the uh, uh, focus of this uh, uh, small group of 12 ministry is experiencing, serving each other and show the leading by the uh, modeling, showing the good example uh, of Christian life. And the third one, a third ministry uh, is uh, the Bible study. So uh, we have most church uh, we call has a Bible studies, but need to be more systemized and structured. That will be more helpful to um, train the leaders. So those uh, who wants to be a small group leader uh, in the future. So the third wheel is the Bible study, and fourth wheel is the worship. So worship time uh, is just a time of experiencing. Uh, God's glory uh, and the time of uh, uh, we can truly uh, commit uh, our lives to uh, before the Lord. So as we experience the presence of the Lord and His glory. And so with these uh, four principles and the four ministries, the so four ministries again, uh, which means uh, number one ministry is a smaller group of transformation. Number two group is a small group of four, uh, which we can uh, show those uh, modeling and uh, the Christian life. And the third one is a Bible study. And the fourth ministry is a worship experience. And the last, the plus one part, but for all these, uh, the discipleship, most important person is uh, myself. So uh, the plus one means uh, how can we maintain my own uh, spiritual or uh, those uh, uh, the goodness. So what I like to suggest is um, so this is the diagram uh, for uh, the four by four plus one system system, and then. And there's a, a plus one part. Um, it's a it's a little bit long story, but uh, this uh, this uh, idea came from the seven feast of God. Uh, so God gave us uh, seven feasts, starting from Passover, and then feast of unleavened bread, feast of first fruit, after then feast of Pentecost, after the feast of trumpet, and then uh, the day of atonement, and last one is the uh, uh, feast of tabernacle. But these every each feast uh, has a lesson. Uh, and specifically, every each feast gave us a time. So like a Passover, uh, uh, need to do at the sunset time, the twilight time. And then the unleavened bread is evening time. And the feast of first fruit is early in the morning. So uh, as we uh, go to the time, so we personal lives every day. Uh, biblically, the uh, day starts from uh, the sunset time. Uh, so, uh, in the uh, sunset time, we experiencing coming before the Lord, uh, experiencing the Passover, the uh, cleansing grace. After then, uh, experiencing the another the sanctification process of feast of unleavened bread, finding those uh, east, which is the uh, lessons from the world, and then take it out. So that's the evening time experience. After then, uh, next morning. And like early in the morning, they break as the uh, feast of first fruit celebrate, uh, like uh, celebrating Jesus' resurrection. So we meeting the uh, resurrected Jesus through uh, devo de uh, devotioning and the word of God. Uh, after then, we praying. So the uh, fourth uh, feast is uh, feast of Pentecost, which uh, uh, the first uh, the 120 and the disciples received the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit at 9 a.m. according to the uh, book of Acts chapter 2 verse 15. So uh, after then we leave with uh, the spiritual empowerment and then afternoon or all day as we leave always we remember the trumpet sound of uh, awakening and so that's the uh, fifth uh, uh, the feast 
uh, after then, uh, day of Atomon and then coming into the uh, uh, seventh uh, feast, which is the Feast of Tabernacle. So, uh, Feast of Tabernacle, we can have a rest and then enjoying the time of uh, like a sabbatical time with the Lord. I talk a lot of things uh, for a short time, but if you have any question, a uh, little more detailed information, yeah, if you can contact me um, with the email, uh, david.oh, um, uh, us.salvationarmy.org, uh, I can send you um, my, the more detailed information. Thank you so much for uh, watching this uh, video.